In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating throwing a basic cylinder. I have cross sections of the five basic steps. The goal here is to have a cylinder that has straight walls and even walls. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate on my kick wheel. Between each step, I'm also going to show you the hand positions in cross sections such as these. So, let's get started. I'm starting here with an amount of clay about the size of my own fist. For me, that's a little bit under two pounds. So if you have smaller hands, you'd use a little bit less clay. If you have larger hands, you'd use more. In the centering video, I went over all of the information you need to know to get the clay centered. I'm going to start with that as well here. And so it's a little bit of a review. I want to have a rounded bottom to attach to the wheel head. So I'll give that a few pats there. And then I place it on the wheel head, lift it up a few inches, and push it down. I can see visually that I didn't hit the center. I have these rings on my wheel head. So if you have rings on your bat or wheel head and you notice you're way off, gently push it closer to center. That's a good way to uh, cut a lot of work out for the centering process. Before I get water on there and get the wheel going fast, I'm gonna tuck my elbows in, kick the wheel slowly, and pat the clay down and towards the center. This gets the clay adhered to the wheel head so you don't push it off, and it also starts the centering process. It takes a little more practice than you think to get that rhythmic padding. The clay is nice and adhered to the wheel head. I'm gonna kick this wheel as fast as I can. The more speed, the better for centering. So, we have some good speed there. I'm gonna take my right hand, get some water onto the clay. My left hand's resting at about nine o'clock. Two scoops of water. My elbows are in. I'm gonna apply pressure, pushing forward in this case. I'm gonna hold steady and I'm gonna ease off. And you can see where the pressure was applied. This whole edge of my hand here. Whereas my left hand was the whole surface contacting. Most of the force came from my right hand in this move. Let's do it again. Couple kicks. Elbows in, apply pressure, hold steady, and ease off. That's pushing. A few more kicks, a little bit more water. I'm gonna pull. Right hand at 12 o'clock, left hand overlapping, elbows in, apply pressure by pulling, hold steady, and ease off. It's getting better. Visually, you can see that it's not dancing as much. It's getting towards center. I'm going to show a slightly different way to push the clay up as I did in the first video. There's lots of ways to hold your hands to center as long as you obey the four keys. I'm going to go back to that first position, left hand at 9 o'clock, right hand at 6 o'clock, but this time I'm going to push my heel and my hand at the bottom and push the clay upwards. So this is another way to go up, to go up into a tower. And you can see my left hand goes up with my right hand, and my hands are locked together. Whenever you can touch your hands together, do it. It's much stronger. So you can see the clay is taller now. It's wobbling a little bit. I'm gonna go to that same position. Instead of pushing upwards, I'm just gonna push forward. Hold steady, ease off, not wobbling as much. Let me give it three kicks. Now, back to the same basic hand position, I'm gonna push forward, so my elbows are in, I'm applying pressure downward now, holding steady and pushing the clay down into the cone. So that's a bit of a review on pushing, pulling, and another way to push up and back down. So now the clay is centered enough. If I really want to check, I'll close my eyes and gently rest my hands on the surface. And I feel like there's a little bit of a wobble at the very bottom, which is common. But this is centered enough to move on to the next step. Step number two is to dig the well. So we need to create a hole in the middle of this mound. Each step of the throwing process, the wheel speed should decrease a little bit. So you go the fastest when you're centering and then 
the next fastest on step two, which is digging the well. There's a lot of ways to do these moves, but they all obey those same four keys to centering. So I'm gonna keep my elbows in and I'm gonna try to hold myself as steady as possible and I'm gonna ease off every time I touch the clay. A good way to start the well is to take your two thumbs, touch them together, gently rest your hands at six o'clock or so, and dive your thumbs down a little ways. You only need to go down a half of an inch to an inch just to get it started. Don't try to go all the way down this way because you'll get twisting around, but it's a good way to start. Now I'm gonna switch hand position. You see I gave myself a little bit of water because you don't wanna do this dry. I'm gonna make the okay sign with my right hand and use my left thumb and touch those three digits together to create a tripod very strong way to hold your fingers. My elbows are in, I'm gonna go right back into that same well that I started, and I'm gonna push down. And my fingers and thumb are contacting the side of the clay as well as the bottom of the well. That's important. You wanna go down until you think you're about one finger's thickness from the wheel head. That takes a little practice because it's hard to visualize how thick the bottom is. You can see there that I kept this position all the way down. If I let my hands, fingers come up like that, I would have a corkscrew. So that's really the key is to do that. So I started with a cone of clay this way. Now I have a cone of negative space. The well is a cone shape. That's the key to keeping that well centered. You started out centered, you gotta hold stable to keep things centered. Let me show you what that looks like in the cross section. Here we have a leather hard cross section after completing step two, digging the well. I'm gonna use this to show hand position. I have it on a bat here that has the numbers of a clock, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock. So that might help you determine where my hands are. This is digging the well and the way I demonstrated it was to make an okay sign with my right hand and use my left thumb and come together. Starting up here when the clay was still a mound, with the wheel spinning at medium fast speed, I went straight down and kept my fingers in this triangular position until I was about one finger's depth from the bottom or what I thought was that. And as I went down, I kept my fingers pressing on this part so instead of diving straight down, you'll tend to have a corkscrew if you do that. Instead of doing that, pull these back so that you really create this cone shape. This is not the only way to hold your hands to get this same shape. Another way to do it, which I commonly do myself, is to use two fingers of my right hand touching each other. My left hand is anchored at nine o'clock and I rest my right hand here and at about six o'clock, I'll go straight down with my fingers touching this part as well. So it accomplishes the same thing. You can see there, it conforms to that shape. This is working at six o'clock. This technique is at three o'clock and nine o'clock and they come down together. This has three fingers, a thumb and two fingers, so it might be a little bit stronger, but this is another way to do it. So you can try either way. After digging the well, the next step is to create and compress the floor. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you how to gauge the depth of the floor or how far you've gone down or when you've dug the well. So I'm gonna use a needle tool and I actually need to stop the wheel. It's one of the few times you do something without the wheel spinning. And my index finger is gonna slide on the needle tool as a gauge. So I just stick it down into the bottom until the needle hits the wheel head and I pull it out. And that's how thick the bottom is. That little hole will be compressed. You don't have to worry about that. And so mine's a, maybe a, it's about a thickness of my pinky in that direction, which is fine. It can be a little thicker than that as well. So now I'm gonna put the needle tool down and get back to the throwing steps. So I'm ready for step three, which is to create and compress the floor. I need more wheel speed here than nothing. So I'm gonna kick the wheel a few times, but I don't need it to go extremely fast. Nice medium speed is good. 
I'm gonna get my hands wet here because I've been doing other things. For this move, I'm gonna anchor my left hand at nine o'clock, similar to where I left it for a lot of the centering moves. And I'm gonna put my index finger and my middle finger of my right hand together so that they're much stronger than one, two fingers together. And I'm gonna rest my right hand on my anchor hand. And I'm gonna come down into the well following the same shape that's already there. Now, I'm gonna take my fingertip of my middle finger and pull towards six o'clock as flat as I can. And I'm pulling into my left hand a little bit and I'm trying to stabilize everything and really create a corner. And I'm gonna ease out and show you what that looks like there. Now, I'm gonna go back in and compress the floor. It's not perfectly flat, and the more you can press down the clay into the wheel head, the stronger the base of your piece, the less chance of it cracking. So I'm gonna go back to the anchor position with my left hand. This time, I'm gonna take my fingertip, and I like to start in the corner and work towards the middle, but you could also start in the middle and work towards the corner back and forth, and you can do this as many times as you want. The more you do it, the better, actually. So now the floor is compressed and a little bit flatter than I started with. I'm gonna show you what those moves look like in the cross section. Here I have a leather hard cross section cut after step three, creating and compressing the floor. And I have it oriented here with the top at 12 o'clock and the, the bottom at six o'clock so you can see where my hand position is. Left hand was anchored at nine o'clock in the middle. My right hand has two fingers touching each other, my middle finger and my index finger backing each other up. And I started in the middle here, compressed down a little bit, and as the wheel spun, I slowly moved my way towards six o'clock. But I didn't stop there. I really exaggerated the corner and went and made this hook. That really helps establish a good corner for your cylinder. So this is not the only way to do it. You'll see other people create floors with other positions, but this is the way I do it. I'm anchored in and I move towards six o'clock and I really try to make a hooked corner there. Now that I've created the floor and compressed it, I'm gonna show you a few optional moves, things that you may wanna do before you move on to step four, pulling up the wall. So the first thing is to recenter the clay if it's been thrown off center in these steps. So I'm gonna whack it a little bit so it's off center. And also tuck the clay inwards a little bit more of a cone shape. I'm gonna to go to the same centering position that I started with, but this time, I don't need to apply as much pressure. The important thing is to hold steady and ease off. So you can see that I recentered it. It had that wobble that I whacked into it and the shape is a little more conical. Now I'm gonna show you an optional move to begin to pull the clay upwards. You don't have to do this, but I find it very helpful. I'm gonna anchor my hand at the same place, nine o'clock, my left hand. I'm gonna use the same two fingers that I created the floor with. I'm gonna go right back into the position that I was. So I'm hooking my fingertips at six o'clock. It's a little dry, so I need a little more water. A Couple more kicks of the wheel, medium speed, and I'm anchoring my hands into each other. Once I have some pressure in the corner, I'm going to lift my hands together as one unit. And I'm gonna ease off once I get up to the very top. So you can see that the clay came up maybe half of an inch or something like that. It's a good way to start the process because the whole challenge of throwing a cylinder is to get the clay from the bottom up to the top. Let me show you what that looks like in the cross section. Here I have a leather hard cross section which I'm gonna use to show the hand position for the optional preliminary pole. So this was cut after creating the floor and compressing it. And I talked about that real exaggerated corner, that hook. I'm gonna utilize that to do this preliminary pole. So my left hand is anchored at nine o'clock. 
my right fingertips are in the inside, especially my middle finger, and I go right into that hook. Once I'm stable, the wheel is spinning, uh, definitely, I just bring both hands up in unison and I pull it up. You can see here, I'm lifting the whole thing because I have that hook there. But if that were attached to the wheel head and the wheel is spinning, as I lift those hands up like that, it thins the wall and it gives you a good first pull from the inside. So as I mentioned many times, this is not a required move, but I find it very helpful. Okay, so we're ready for step four, which is pulling up the wall. This is kind of the magic throwing move. I'm finally ready for it. There's a few things that you absolutely must do to do this correctly. The position that you hold your hands is really crucial. Your left hand always goes on the inside. Your right hand always goes on the outside. And you work between three and four o'clock. If you do anything else, if you switch it around, it may work for a little while, but then something will go wrong and it will catch and make a big mess. So I'm gonna be working here at about four o'clock with my left hand on the inside and my right hand on the outside. I need to kick the wheel, give me uh, medium speed, not too fast. I have a lot of extra clay down at the bottom on the wheel head. I'm gonna use my finger and just to kind of remove some of that. And then a good way to, to, to get started is to take a finger and really make a groove on the bottom of your cone so that your outside fingertips will enter that groove. The next thing I'm gonna do is bridge my hand, left hand over the wall and dribble water on it. That's a good way to get water on the inside and on the outside. And you can run your hands over it. Make sure it's not dry, especially as you're learning few kicks of the wheel here. The next thing I'm gonna show you is kind of a training move. So this is not a way that I throw normally. Most people don't do this, but it's a really good way to learn where your fingers go, which is to take your two thumbs, lock them into each other, curve your fingertips so that your right fingertips are a little bit beyond your left fingertips, and then put them so that your fingertips are down at the bottom. Put your nose right over the wheel so that my nose is right over the wall of clay. My left fingertips are in that groove and I'm going to apply pressure between my fingertips. Once I feel some pressure, I'm going to slowly move both hands up together towards my nose. As I go up the wall, I lighten the pressure a little bit. So by the time I get to the very top, it's almost like there's no pressure at all and then I'll ease off. If you remember the four keys, I followed those too. My elbows were in, I applied pressure with my fingertips, I held as steady as I could, and then when I got to the top, I really eased off. So that was the first pull. There's no magic number of pulls for throwing vessels, cylinders, whatever they may be, but generally it's in the range of two to five or six. I'm gonna probably do about three pulls so that was number one. You can see here that the shape of the cylinder flared out a little bit on me. That's not ideal, but it happens. So I'm gonna show you what to do in that case. I'm gonna get a little water on the outside and I'm gonna take my both hands and place them at the bottom of the cylinder with light pressure. So I'm creating a triangle with my hands. Light pressure at the bottom and as I go up the cylinder, I make sure that pressure stays constant. So you can kind of see it triangular at the top. And I'm gonna ease off. That's called collaring. You use it a lot for shaping, but you also use it to straighten up your wall and to tuck it back in when it flares out. So let me show you what pulling up the wall looks like in the cross section. Here I have a, a leather hard cross section of a cylinder that I was pulling the wall up on. And I actually stopped halfway and pulled it off the wheel, let it firm up, and I've sliced it in half. So the idea here is that you can get a look at what the wall looks like as it's being pulled up. So if you look here, the bottom is a little bit thinner than the top because I was on my uh, way to pulling that up towards the top. And I wanna use it to show hand position. 
here's three o'clock on the clock face and here's nine o'clock over here. I'm gonna be working on the three o'clock side. And the way I pulled up the wall on the cylinder was my left hand was on the inside, my right hand was on the outside. I started with my right fingertips resting on the wheel head, my left fingertips in the corner. And as I went up here, you can see that I'm locked in right there. So that's where my fingers were. I like to have my index finger putting a little pressure above the, or right on the lump and my middle finger catches the lump. My inside, I tend to use my middle finger as the main, but they're touching other fingers and middle finger to middle finger is where most of the pressure is and these other fingers are for support. So that's the way that I pulled up the wall on the cylinder. While I'm here, I want to show you so you can see that there's other ways to hold your fingers that accomplish the same thing. So some people use a knuckle. So they'll put their thumb inside of their index finger and the knuckle can go right into that groove. The inside hands, at least for me, generally stay the same. So I use fingertips. And here's another way to pull up the wall is to use a knuckle. It's really strong. You don't have as much sensitivity, but it can come in handy for larger amounts of clay. And some people just use this um, more than others and you find it works for them. So fingertips or a thumb inside of an index finger used as a knuckle. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you is that you can do the same thing with a sponge. So using my fingers on the outside of the sponge, I do that generally towards the end of cylinders and vessels on the final pole. So the pressure's still in the same place, but there's different ways to hold your fingers and use a sponge or not. So I've done one pole and collared it in a little bit, but as you can see, the walls are still fairly thick. So I need to pull the clay up again. I'm gonna kick the wheel back to medium speed. A good thing to do between each pole is to check the condition of your cylinder as it is. Is it wobbly? Collar it in, try to center it again. And a good thing to do often is to set the top. So I'm gently resting my left fingers on inside and outside of the wall. And with one finger of my right hand, I just press down so that those three digits come together and compress the top and then ease off. So it's good to do that um, whenever you notice it being less than perfect up there. I'm going to pull the clay up again, obeying the rule, which is to put my left hand on the inside, my right hand at the, on the outside and work at three or four o'clock. And I'm gonna make a groove again for my outside fingers to reach. My left fingertips are going to go right into the corner inside and my right fingertips are going to go in that groove which means that your outside hand, your right hand, is always lower than your left hand fingertips. I have my left hand bridged over the wall of clay so that my thumb is on the outside. This is a good way to do it because I can anchor my outside hand to that thumb. So this is different than that locking position I showed for the first pole, which is a good way to, to kind of learn the position. This is a more natural way to do it, which is to lock your hands together in a comfortable manner. So you can see my middle finger is in that groove and my index finger is right above the groove. A good thing to do is to apply some pressure and hang out for a moment. Gather some clay from the bottom. As soon as you've gathered some clay, now begin to bring both hands up together. And you'll see a lump of clay on the outside wall. And then the right hand picks up that lump of clay as you go up. So the lump kind of disappears as you go up the wall. As you go up, lighten your pressure a little bit. So by the time you get up to the very top, it's a lot less pressure than you started with. And always remember to ease off. So you can see my cylinder flared out once again a little bit. I'm gonna use the collaring moves to collar that back. A Couple kicks of the wheel. I'm gonna apply some water on the outside only. You don't want the wheel going too slow when you collar, it won't work too well. So you need some medium speed. And this time I'm gonna start right here which is a narrow spot. So you don't necessarily have to start at the very bottom. My hands are gonna go into a triangle shape applying th 
three points of pressure, and it's very light pressure here because that's the narrow spot. As I go up the wall, I keep my hands in the same position and the clay conforms around my hands. And that's bringing the clay inward back into a cone type shape. When you're throwing a cylinder, you don't want it to be straight walled until the very, very end. It's better to keep it at at least a little bit of an inward tilt so that centrifugal force doesn't make it worse. Much better to be inward a little bit and you can do that by collaring. So that was the second pole with my left hand on the inside, my right hand on the outside working at four o'clock. Let me show you what that looks like in the cross section to pull the wall up on a soft cylinder. So I'm gonna ask you to use your imagination and pretend that this is a full cylinder rotating on the wheel and that you're having a magic camera that can look inside and see the wall of clay. In reality, the wheel's not gonna be spinning and I'm gonna put my hands in the position that I would if I were pulling up the wall in a real cylinder. So I'm gonna get my hands wet and actually get the wall of clay wet a little bit so I don't stick on it at all, which is the same thing I would be doing if I was actually throwing. And the first thing I'm gonna talk about is where my hands are on the wheel face. So this is 12 o'clock, this is three o'clock over here. I'm gonna work at three o'clock. My left hand is going on the inside of the cylinder. My right hand is going on the outside. My right finger, I'm gonna use my middle finger as the main power, touches the wheel head. So it starts at the very bottom. My left hand hits the floor. So the thickness of your floor is important. If you have a floor that's about one finger's thick, that's a good uh, thickness to set your fingers in the right offset. So if, there, if it's a thicker or thinner floor, you may have to adjust a little bit, but generally speaking, your left fingers go down to the floor, your right fingers go down to the, to the wheel head. And then you apply pressure between both. It's a question I get a lot. Is it the outside hand or the inside hand? You, you do both. So your inside finger creates a lump of clay pushing outwards and your outside hand catches that lump. I'm gonna get a little bit of water here so I don't get dry. And I'm gonna do it. So pretend the wheel is spinning. I've applied pressure with both fingers, inside and outside. And as I go up, the clay snakes through those fingers. So the wheel is spinning, which gives you some more power. And as you get up to the top, you gently let go. So. It's not straight, but what you can see here is just by doing that move, this side is much taller than this side because the clay has been pinched between those fingers. Let me do it one more time and we'll see how this goes. Some water on there. Working at three o'clock, right hand on the outside, left hand on the inside. Apply pressure with both fingertips and work your way up with the clay snaking through your fingertips. So you catch the lump of clay with the outside hand and I think that's all the clay is gonna do for us. I got very tired there, but you can see how the physics of it works. I'm gonna do one more pull of this cylinder. This time I'm gonna do something a little bit different, which is to hold a damp sponge in my outside hand. This, I find it very helpful. You don't hit any dry spots. I like to do it towards the end of the cylinder. Some people throw with the sponge in their outside hand the whole time. So try it and see how it works for you get the wheel back to medium speed here. I'm gonna bridge my left hand over the wall and with the sponge, I'll dribble some water so that it gets water on the inside and the outside. Two more kicks. This time, it's awkward for me to keep my elbows in. So I've been talking about your elbows in the whole time, but there is a point where the height of your vessel prohibits you from keeping usually your left elbow in. So you can break the rule at this point. So if it's more comfortable, you can bring an elbow up, which is what I'm going to do once I start pulling the wall. I'm going to start at the bottom here and make that groove with the sponge so you can see that there. My left hand is on the inside, my right hand's on the outside. I'm working at four o'clock here. My fingertips are in the inside corner. You can see that, that big lump. Gathering some clay at the bottom, and now I'm gonna work my way up. And 
And I'm lessening the pressure as I go up the wall of clay. When I get to the very top, there's very little pressure, and I'll ease off. So the cylinder is a little bit taller. The wall's a little bit straighter. So I find that I get straighter walls when I use a sponge on the outside hand as opposed to my fingertips. And uh, it decreases the amount of throwing lines on the surface for me, which may be desirable, may not be. Uh, and now I'm not gonna pull the wall up anymore. I'm gonna hope that this is an even walled cylinder. I'm not trying for a paper thin cylinder wall here. It's more important to get to learn how to get the walls even first. Even if they're a little bit on the thicker side, if the walls are even, that's a good accomplishment and you'll learn more about thinning the wall from that point on as you continue to throw. So I'm going to uh, do some final tune-ups of this cylinder before I cut it in half and show you the inside. So the first thing I'll do is take a look at it and see if I need to collar it in. It looks okay, so I don't need to do that in this case. I'm gonna look inside and look at the floor. It's full of water, because I was dumping a bunch of water in there to do the poles. So I need to get that water out. Don't leave water in the bottom of anything you throw on the wheel. It causes the bottom to crack in the drying stage. I'm gonna use a damp sponge with my fingers and just gently reach in there and try to get that water out of there. Sometimes you do this and you might mess up your cylinder shape. There's one, a little bit more needs to come out. That looks better. And I bumped the top a little bit, so I'm gonna go back to the move that I showed in the middle of this cylinder, which is to bridge my left fingers right about, I like to work at about six o'clock for this, and this time I'll use the sponge and compress the lip back even and smooth and rounded, so that looks decent. The next thing I'm going to look at is the outside and where the cylinder meets the wheel head. It's very common to have extra clay. I'm going to use a wooden knife and trim away that ex extra clay so that we get a real nice straight cylinder. With the tip of the knife, I'm going to dive straight down. I'm working at about four o'clock as well, maybe even five o'clock. And I'm going to push downwards until that knife hits the wheel head. And a key to getting that to work well is as you push down, push inward a little bit with your pressure. If you don't do that and you start to push down and it starts to take you away, you'll go, whoa, it'll pull you out. So I created a ring. I'm gonna stop the wheel, use the knife and cut it right into that ring at a little bit of an angle. This is where kick wheels are nice. Now I can just kick the wheel slowly in like a snow plow. It pushes all the clay away from the bottom. So you can see there where I trimmed the clay off is a little bit drier. So let's call that a cylinder. I'm gonna clean off my hands a little bit. And as you're learning, what you wanna do is cut your cylinder in half and analyze it. Some people use a wire tool and they go straight down, which seems to work fine. I tend to start at the bottom and pull it up. And when I use the wire, I, I do it like dental floss. So it's around my fingers and I hold it pretty taut. And I like to use this wheel head has little holes in it for attaching a bat. That's a good way to know that I'm halfway through the cylinder when I cut through. So if you wanna cut your cylinder in half and not have it fall apart on you, just cut through halfway on the floor and then pull it up the wall. So I'm gonna start up here at 12 o'clock and my thumbs are pressing down on the wire and I'm gonna pull straight through until I'm halfway. So I can use those little holes in my wheel head to indicate that. So give it a shake back and forth them there. And this is a kind of the hard part because there's a lot of uh, drag at the bottom. So I'm going slow. And once I get through the floor, there's very little drag and now I can pull it up the wall. And now, I can pull away the front cylinder. And the second side is still attached to the wheel head. And a good way to really see what's going on there is remove that little bit of extra clay. And so for a cylinder to be successful, what you wanna have is a flat floor. Generally, the floor should be a little bit thicker than your wall. 
and you want to have a straight wall that's relatively even. You don't want it to be really tapered. Mine has just a little bit of a taper to it, so I could have pulled a little bit more clay up, but generally speaking, this is a successful cylinder. Thanks for watching.